Today I'm talking to Dugan Hammock, a mathematician and artist who lives in four-dimensional space. As Jonathan Gorard mentioned in our recent conversation on how to draw the hypergraph in Wolfram physics, Dugan has worked on plotting the evolution of the hypergraph over time. So there's lots I want to ask him about. Dugan, welcome to The Last Theory. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. I know you have some amazing animations, so perhaps you can start showing us. Okay, yeah. So, so this is a collaboration I did with Max Cooper. It starts out with the hypersphere and taking different cross-sections of it. Now the parameterization of the shape is changing, so it becomes a solid torus. That is the extrusion of a sphere, a little sphere, around a circular track. And these are the cross-sections of that. Beautiful. It's not quite a hypertorus yet, but it'll get there soon. Okay, here we go. So now I'm changing the parameterization, and now it's becoming an actual hypertorus. So that's the extrusion of a torus dragged around a circular track. There's the hypertorus cross-section in white, and then the hollow interior of the hypertorus is a different hypershape, and that's sliced in the gray here. The hypershape is made by taking a solid torus and pulling that around a circular track. Now, as you pull that around, you can tumble it in three axes spinning while you extrude it around a circular track. So that's what this is. So this is like a twisted hypertorus. Yeah, that's beautiful. Lots of fun to do. Yeah, absolutely. I slaved for like a month in MATLAB just hammering it out. <laughs> I can completely believe that. I tend to work in three-dimensional geometry, and that's hard enough, so four-dimensional oh, yeah. is an extra level. So here we have another demonstration of this hypertorus bundle slicing. The static hypershape has a projected shadow in three dimensions. That's the gray stuff. Okay. Sort of a faint wireframe mesh. So basically, the colored elements of this image are the cross-section through the four-dimensional space in three dimensions. So we're, we're rendering it in three dimensions, but we're looking at a cross-section of a four-dimensional space. Right, and that cross-section is this three-dimensional form. Yeah. Now the coloring is a, sort of a radial gradient on the hypershape, so you can see where blue meets yellow. It's spinning and then it's paddle wheeling through the slice like a water mill paddles into the water and then some of the paddle goes below it and then goes up but the intersection at the water surface the shape that the paddle makes into the water surface that cross section yeah that's what this is and so some of the hyper shape is below that most of it here is below that but some of it's at the top and this was a lot of fun because i got joysticks running in, in matlab where i can move the camera and move the shape in real time and just kind of explore. Perfect. This was a fun project I did. George Francis sketched this for a paper by Thurston. So this, this thing is a blob. I made this sketch of a hypershape in computer memory and then started taking slices of it. The camera is tunneling through a void of where the shape isn't. Yep. And then I wanted to show how the void at one handlebar went into the void that goes into the other handle. And the area that's void actually extends outwards and leaves the hypershape. Yep. In a sort of a weird way. Yep. <laughs> Very interesting. This torus splits off to two tori. And then one of those tori pinches itself and becomes a sphere at this handle. And then the rest of the hypershape is this torus here that goes off and branches. It gets branched instead of pinching. This single torus turns into a genus two torus here at this handle, and the hypershape pushes its hypervolume, its shape, off to the top right. Yeah. And so the challenge for me was to take this sketch, model it in CAD software, and then feed the spline curves into MATLAB and build this thing up as an isosurface. So it's like taking a slice of a five-dimensional graph plot. Yeah. I think that's what it was. It's was pretty, <laughs> pretty hairy. Fantastic. Yeah. So that's that. Okay.
I'm going to talk about this. I did this in tubing in Germany with Franz Pettit and Nick Schmidt and Rob Kusner. So this is a two-dimensional surface inside the hypersphere, which is shown here in stereographic projection. And the construction is to take these circles in the hypersphere. They're all symmetrically arranged at angles to each other. So you have kind of a hexagon going around the equator. The lines that go out to infinity are actually circles in the projection. It's a genus 2 surface with a lot of the same symmetry properties as a torus. And genus 2 there just refers to the fact that effectively it's a torus, but it has two holes in it. That's correct, yes. Yeah. And then under one rotation, this is called the button. It looks like a button. Yep, perfect. <laughs> Thanks for listening to The Last Theory. Join me for fresh insights into Wolfram Physics every other week. Subscribe to the free newsletter, podcast or YouTube channel at lasttheory.com. After all, this might be the most fundamental scientific breakthrough of our time.